Astronomy group the Baker Street Irregulars have been preaching the gospel of inner city astronomy for over 10 years. But here, at Television Centre under bright West London night skies, it's easy to be skeptical. Well, gentlemen, I've observed in some ridiculous places for the sky at night, but I think this wins, wins the award. What are we doing here? Why are we in the middle of London trying to look at the sky? Well, we just want to prove that the good astronomy can be done from any location, regardless of the conditions. And it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a city, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the light pollution, good astronomy can still be done, no problem. So uh, we're just off to prove this. What are the, the simple tips for people who want to observe with the naked eye from the middle of a, a city? What can you do to help? Well, uh, one thing that you can do is move away from local light pollution so don't have any lights immediately in your surroundings or going on to go uh, into a relatively locally dark area uh, dark adapt your eyes um, get, get used to being outside in the dark absolutely yeah, yeah. take um, somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes for full dark adaptation and you'll see a lot more you three and your group have been really ambitious so 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 what have you gone on to do from inner city skies. For me, this is just, yeah. I mean, uh, we've all uh, branched out in various directions, uh, which is why uh, we've got a little group here today. We have uh, ISS imaging here. We have people who like uh, night vision devices. Yeah. Well, well, let's go in order. Let's yeah. talk about the space station, because I think there's something about seeing the space station in the sky and waving at it that yes. really appeals to people. But you've taken it much further than that. Yes, it's definitely, I think, one of the brightest uh, objects in the sky. One can observe wherever you are, whatever light polluted um, city you are living in. You said you'd f you photographed it yes. as well. How do you go about doing that? I had to experiment myself because there, there are no um, descriptions that, or, or recipes that how you need to do this. So I had to experiment a bit, but it's, but it's a telescope and a high frame rate camera. And swinging across the sky exactly. as well. It's, it's manual tracking. Do you have a particular favorite image that you've captured or a particular pass of the space station that sticks in your mind? There are a few, but if I probably have to choose one, it was last year I had a birthday present. The, the ISS just went in front of the moon and even Chris, Chris Hetfield, the astronaut, shared it on Twitter. So, nice. so you managed to capture a photo of yes. that yes. from here in London? Yes, it's an animation because we're taking high frame rate uh, camera videos. It means that you can actually see it zoom past him. Can, can we see it here? You can even see some of the, 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 the spacecraft that dock to the International Space Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very often if you go out at night in the uh, early evening, um, all of the planets are so bright, they will be out before any of the stars. So yeah. they're from an urban location, very, very easy to identify. I mean, we have one taken of Venus here, but in this case, we've used an ultraviolet filter and combined the normal white light images with the ultraviolet so we can get some uh, cloud detail there. Filters are part of this game. If we're doing city astronomy and city astrophotography, yeah. filters are really important. Very much so. If you take a look at here, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. here we have the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, this shot is taken unfiltered and unprocessed. But if we show you the same picture, once uh, filters have been uh, applied and it's been properly processed, you can see the sky now has gone back to black, nice and dark. You can see all of the stars behind it. You can see the dust lanes, everything. That's a the beautiful shot. Galaxies. And we should say, when we say filter, this isn't a Photoshop filter. This isn't something in the computer. No, it's a this physical is a filter, filter on the telescope that yes. stops the, the light pollution getting into the image. Absolutely. I have to say, I'm a I stare at a laptop most of the day, okay. and so when I come and want to use the telescope, I want to look through it. I'm a visual observer. Is right. there, Gavin, is there anything we can do to rescue that experience from the middle of a city? Right, yes, there is, and, and that's obviously my, that's my passion, is live visual observing. What I use is, is to help me is this device you see here, which is a, a night vision monocular used by the military. Okay. And um, this actually intensifies the light by about 60 to 70,000 times. So in films, this is where you see them look and it's all green and people are running around in the woods. That yes, sort of that, thing. exactly. Yeah. But this one is actually white, so right. it's a more natural uh, uh, looking there. And that's one of my favourite nebulae, oh. the Rosette Nebula. So, so, so let's look at this. The structure in this image is, is just lovely. Um, so that's through a telescope with this enhancing night vision device. Yep. And if you know what you're doing, you can achieve spectacular results. These might look like pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope, but they're actually the work of a member of the Baker Street Irregulars, taken from right here in light-polluted London. 
Well, it's brilliant and important work that you're all doing. Keep, keep it up and, um, you know, let's enjoy the sky wherever we are. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, hopefully we've convinced you that even from a rooftop in a city, there's plenty to see in the sky. So to tell us what to look out for, here's Pete.